this week's video is a simple niacinamide toner. So the formula's on the side in percent and grams for you. We're first going to add our water, which is our solvent, and to that we need to dissolve our niacinamide. It dissolves really readily in water, um, so you shouldn't have any problems with this. It comes in powder form and you can get it from most suppliers. I get mine from aromantic.co.uk. Um, Niacinamide is very good for things like rosacea because it helps to reduce water loss, improve the skin's texture and it softens the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles and it can help to reduce redness and inflammation which is why I've included it in this toner. Also it was a niacinamide toner so it would be silly to leave it out. <laughs> so add that to your water and then you want to give it a really good stir until it completely dissolves um, which it will do quite easily and you'll see the water go clear. Make sure you agitate it enough to get all those little bits dissolved and then once the water is completely clear you can move on to your next ingredient which is our witch hazel. Now this isn't normal witch hazel, this is witch hazel hydrolate or distilled witch hazel. This cleanses to remove excess dirt and build up on the skin to clarify so ensure that you get the distilled version as this is designed for cosmetic use um, and it works really really well in toners. Then I'm adding aloe vera juice as this is soothing and anti-inflammatory and also hydrating. It just helps soften the toner and just make it more um, calming and uh, can be quite cool to use. It's very nice in summer, it's very refreshing. I'm just adding that with a pipette so that I can control the amount that I'm adding. And then I'm going to add some green tea extract. So this soothes and calms irritated skin. It can help improve skin elasticity and it's really good for conditions like eczema and rosacea. Uh, rosacea is one of the reasons that I'm making this toner, um, which is why I've chosen this extract. It will change the colour of the final product, obviously, as you can see here. So if you want a perfectly clear toner, you may want to use a different extract that doesn't have any colour to it like this one. Um, but I do recommend this for those conditions if that's why you're making it. And then you want to add your vegetable glycerin and this is our humectant. I always recommend you add a humectant of some sort into a formula like this. How much you add is completely up to you. I like to keep the glycerin percentage fairly low as it can be quite sticky in the final product if you add too much depending on your formulation. Once that's added you need a preservative because it's a water-based product. I'm using Salagard PCG. This is a broad spectrum water soluble preservative um, but you can add a different one depending on your preference. I get mine from aromantic.co.uk. I'm not an affiliate this is just where I've bought these ingredients. Then once that's added, you need to stir this really, really well um, to get everything combined. It will go a little bit cloudy initially, but it does clear up. And then after that, you are going to need to check the pH. Um, there's various opinions on the optimal pH for niacinamide, um, but most people seem to fall in at around six. So we need to get this to a six. If you want to know a little bit more about taking pH uh, and adjusting it then I do have a video linked below. Uh, the uh, thumbnail looks like that. So take a little bit of your toner and put it in a beaker and then read the pH with your pH meter. This is one that can take the pH of liquids. I got this one from dipslides.com. I think they're linked below as well and there might even be a discount code if you're lucky. So read the pH and we can see that this one has come up at 6.74 which is just a little bit too high so what I'm going to do is adjust this down with a citric acid solution. To do this you do 50% distilled water with 50% citric acid, mix that up to dissolve it and then we're just going to add a few drops with a pipette into the main batch 
Then once that's thoroughly mixed, we're going to pour a little bit back into a smaller beaker and read the pH again. And we'll do this as many times as we need to get to the optimal pH. I suggest doing it in tiny drops at a time because you don't want to go too far in the opposite direction. So taking the pH again, we're doing this in a separate container from the main batch because we don't want to contaminate the main batch. So the pH reading now has come up at about, if you can see this, a 6.01, which is fine, that's just over. I'm going to use a pH strip as well, just to match that and check we're in the right range. Um, and we are spot on six by the pH paper. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to leave this now and bottle it up. And I'm just using one of these plastic bottles with a flip cap. Um, I just got this on Amazon. And I'm just going to pour that in and it should be ready to use straight away. And you can see how it's cleared up a little bit now and it will get clearer as it sits for 24 hours as well. And to apply this, you just simply use a cotton round and just wipe it on your face. And I did see some quite significant reduction of redness uh, on my cheeks after using this in the evening the next morning it was quite a lot less inflamed so so far so good i'm quite happy with this um, i'm just labeling it up with the ingredients and a batch number which i have as the date so i know when i made this and can keep an eye on it these labels because everyone keeps asking i buy these clear labels from avery and i print them on a thermal printer a uh, laser printer and to make them scratch resistant, you just need to stick another clear label over the top, but otherwise they're waterproof, oilproof, etc. And that's how I've made a basic niacinamide toner. If you have any questions, drop them below. Otherwise, please do subscribe and uh, leave any other comments and I'll see you next week.